800 years ago, demons existed. Immune to modern weaponry, humanity was pushed to the brink of extinction. Humanity then prayed and gods appeared, battled deities called Idaten. They quickly defeated the demons and sealed them. To ensure the safety and effectiveness of the seal, the Idaten sacrificed themselves, leaving only the young Rin to protect the seal and guide the not-yet-born gods. At present time, Rin is training Hayato and tells him to go faster as she runs ahead of him. Annoyed she is faster, he insults her, but in an instant, Rin turns around and starts beating him. As they finish the race, Rin complains that Hayato took nine hours to run around the earth, which is slower than usual. Hayato is angry and insults her, reminding her that he was slow due to her beating him. However, for insulting her again, he gets beaten once again. Rin tells him that he needs to be fast to be a proper Idaten and starts telling him about the demons, but Hayato isn't interested in listening as he had heard this story before. He has been born 80 years, and the world seems peaceful to him. Hayato goes to Mediusli, who is reading a book. Hayato wonders why doesn't he train sometimes, but Easley prefers not to and states that he loves studying and due to his long lifespan, he can learn more than a human can. The two then go see Paula, scaring the birds she was with and annoying her. Hayato wonders if the birds told her something, and Paula reveals they told her that humans had gathered by the glaciers up north and had giant green birds with them. Isley guesses it's the military transport airplanes of the Zobel Empire. Hayato states that instead of wondering what they are doing there, they should just go check out. As they reach the glacier, they see a large group of humans, and Hayato comments they can't get closer without being seen. Isley asks Paula to go as she can move fast and quietly and gives her a microphone so they can hear what the humans are saying. Ubemi comments that they are almost done, and Paula notices a large frozen demon, Judokan. Ubemi explains the demon is weak, but it's more than enough for humans, but wonders if the gods had changed. Hayato is excited to see a demon that Rin talks about, however. Isley wonders how Ubami knows about the events 800 years ago. Hayato guesses he may have been alive for 800 years, but that's not possible for a human. Easley then starts to consider that Ubemi may not be human and is a demon who has been working on reviving the demon kind. Isley calls someone to come and retrieve the demon's body before Zobel Empire and does the same. Hayato realizes that humans should die from a plane crash and goes to check on Ubami, but sees he is a robot who did not let himself get caught, blows himself up. Elsewhere, in a town-turned-battlefield, Zobel's soldiers enter a church and see young sister. She tries to tell them that God won't forgive them for their pillaging, but the men don't care and strip her and then violate her. Paula and Isley are considering starting training. Paula wonders about Rin and Isley explains that she is the strongest Idaten and fought with the demons 800 years ago. As Ubemi is a robot, the one controlling him is still out there in the safest place is to be near Hayato or Rin, as if they have someone stronger than Gudo Kun, Isli, and Paul will be done. Although if they train under Rin, they also may be done. Isli explains he used to train with Hayato under Rin, but ran away after three months. Paula thinks that Isli is exaggerating, but as they sneak seeing a training session between Hayato and Rin, and how brutal she is in beating Hayato, she starts to believe Isli's stories. Elsewhere, Piscolet leads a Zobel army and motivates them to kill and steal. She receives a report from Dr. Ubami, asking for the sea soldiers to return. As she decides to return, a missile hits her. Piscolat comes out unharmed and throws a tank at the enemy. Piscolat returns to Zobel, where she meets Nickel. Piscolat scolds her that she needs to show more respect towards the superior officer. Nickel agrees and states she needs to be more formal with her manner of speech. Bayerov, the Prime Minister of Zobel Empire, wonders why he isn't part of the meeting. The Emperor, Takashita informs him that the meeting has nothing to do with him as his job is running the government. As they leave for the meeting, Bayarov calls Kajakiki and tells him to look into it. As everyone gathers and the meeting starts, Ubami shows up in a badly made robot, explaining his usual body got destroyed by the Idatans. Before they continue, Nickel stops Ubami and transforms her arm, breaking the wall and capturing Kajakiki, and then proceeds to cut him into pieces. Brandy tells Ubami, the demon lord who granted them human forms and intelligence, that they can continue with the meeting. Isli, Confident in the Idaten supremacy, begins making moves to ensure that the demons are driven to extinction. Meanwhile, the demons send a team to take out the comparatively weaker Hayato, Paula, and Isley. Victory appears all but assured for the Idaten. However, they did not reckon with the mysterious demon lord. 
with both sides willing to stop at nothing to destroy each other. How will the battle of wits unfold? At the demons' meeting, Piscolat explains that it was the fourth a date and they didn't have data, and who was extremely strong and likely the one surviving for 800 years. Hubami didn't expect one from 800 years to still be alive and wonders if Nickel Transmitter is still fine. But Piscolat confirms they lost audio soon after G13 was eliminated, and guess someone noticed and disabled it. Hubami realizes they knew about the first transmitter and left it partially functional to gauge their response. Hubami states that they can't ignore Hayato, Nisli, and Paula as they could become monsters on their own. Hubami then tells Piscolat, Neput, and Cory to use the military track the three Idatans and eliminate them. The demons decide to use the humans and strike when they are separated. Meanwhile, Rin decides to wipe out the whole Zobel Empire, as she can't distinguish demons from humans. Rin agrees that Pronti will be of help, but as she assigned him to watch over the world, she has no idea where to find him. Paula starts to say where Pronti is, but Isli shuts her up, stating that they will go looking for him and Rin to wait for about a week before taking any action. Rin agrees, and at that moment, Hayato attacks her, stating he is healed and wants to train. Annoying that she was talking, Rin knocks him out. However, Nisli is impressed that Hayato was able not only to land an attack by himself but also to slightly move Rin. He realizes that Hayato's loss and the hunger for the strength it inspired has powered him up a bit. Prontia wins a remote-controlled car race. He explains he won due to his racing techniques, but as he is satisfied with his results, he won't be continuing to race and this experiment of his has come to an end. Isli calls him and tells him that they arrived at Zio Coast and Prontier runs to them. As they greet each other, Pronti burns Usli, showing his new magical skills. Seeing Nickel's head, he realizes they are not there for fun. Hotena is the land of liberty. Formed by the world's business interests, it is a nation based on the idea of free market. For those with enough money, it could be considered the most peaceful place in the world. At Prontia's place, they see many monitors and Prontia explains they are all connected to his mind, and he has been making use of potential Idaten abilities as Leslie hypothesized. Hayato wonders why are they wasting time as they need to bring Prontia to Granny. Isli tells Prontia to stay calm and reveals the Granny Hayato refers to as Rin. Hearing that, Prontia turns pale and starts rolling in fear. As he continues to panic that he will be killed, Isli, who expected this, tells the rest that they need to wait a while until he calms down. Pronti calms down upon hearing that Rin isn't mad. Bisley explains he requested a week under the pretense he will be searching for Pronti and hopes in that time he'd help them perform a psychohack on Zobel's computer network to verify the demon's numbers. However, as that won't take long, he offers Hayato to train with Pronti. Hayato wonders if Pronti is strong as he is scared of Rin, and Pronti wonders why he can be that rude to her and if he isn't scared. But Hayato states that even if you are nice or rude to her, she will still brutally mess you up the same way. Isli takes the head and leaves them. He knows that if Hayato and Isli go head to head, the demons will notice, but knows they can't beat Prontia and hopes they can capture one of the demons alive. Meanwhile, the demons had hacked all cameras in Hotina and monitored them. Barcode notices Isli and Brandy dispatches Piscolat to deal with him. In Isli's lab, he asks Dr. Gachikama if Judo Kun was alive. How would he have killed him, which he replies to be poison. Beasley realizes the demons are trying to find a way to propagate. A man comes to Beasley, telling him there is trouble. As he takes him to a room, he asks if he will be spared now. But Piscolat cuts into pieces, however. Beasley manages to dodge her attacks. As he traps him in the room, she wonders for how long he will be able to evade her. Beasley breaks the lights, and as Piscolat attacks Miss, he opens the door for Light to enter. Cory transforms his head into a giant mouth and tries eating Hayato and Paula. But Hayato pushes Paula away and is eaten instead. Paula kicks Cory between his legs, causing him to spit Hayato. Neput attacks Pronti, but his attack doesn't even move Pronti, who then uses a lighting attack to blind Neput. Isli uses a flash grenade to blind Piscolat, but as she blocks the exit, he wishes to talk with her until she recovers her sight. After a while, Nisli launches an attack that is off Piscolat's shirt and after, uses a highly potent narcotic and aphrodisiac cocktail, which the brain cannot resist to weaken her. Meanwhile, Cory and Hayato continue fighting but not injuring each other. Pronti figures Hayato will eventually win the fight. Piscolat asks to be killed by Nisli but instead he decides to tweak her brain. 
Six hours later, Cory is exhausted and Hayato wins. Cory and Neput are then taken to Weasley to be brainwashed. After their brainwashing, they get the information about their population and the demons that are posing a threat. Haley plans on making their return to Zobo, but Meku has an abnormal level of observational insight. Thus, she will realize their brains have been tampered with as soon as she sees them. As Meku observes Rin for a while, she asks for the fleet formation to be moved, and as she changed the fleet formation, she made things harder for Rin, and that causes a reaction in Rin. However, Meku states that if she doesn't want to kill humans, she could just run away instead of getting ready to attack. Neput explains that 70 years ago, while he and Takeshita were still kids, Obama used to rule over Zobel as Emperor Obama. As he reached the death age for a human, he faked his death and abdicated the throne for Takeshita, and then returned as a scientist named Ubami. They suspected he could be a human, but even if the one controlling the androids changed, they are not sure why would they spend centuries trying to help the demons. Paula then suggests as they are created from human thoughts. He may be created by demon thoughts. Disley rules it out, stating if he was Idaten, he would have known more about Idaten's than what he knows now. Disley then wants to take a break but wishes to speak with Pronti. Hayata wishes to train and Pronti suggests to try and defeat the three demons. Disley asks Piscolat something in secret about Ubami and she confirms. Pronti has a replica of the demon seal, but instead of demons, he sealed cockroaches. Isley wonders if a third party can remove the seal. Pronti explains that destroying the place with the seal will break it. Isley figures that Rin believes the same, and that's why she is protecting the seal, however. He then proceeds to break it, showcasing that all the cockroaches are already dead. Since inside the seal, the demons aren't in cryogenics. Isley believes that all demons had already died 799 years ago, and the Idaten wasted their lives as they could have maintained the seal in shifts for over a year. However, neither they nor Rin considered that. Thinking about it, Yesli wonders how can Ubami has a machine that can mimic a human, and believes it only possible if he has thought of controlling it like Pronti controls his toy race car. Pronti then realizes that Isli implies that Ubami is an Idaten. Isli explains that Piscolat confirmed that they found them by hacking cameras all over the country. But you need to be an Idaten to hack cameras not connected to the internet. Meku decides to directly ask Ubami, what is he? Ubami states she is the first to express their suspicions. Ubami is fine with Miku keeping digging, as he doesn't know what he is. Isli states that Paula's guess that Ubami is Idaten born from the demon's thoughts is not far off the truth. Knowing where Ubami is, Pronti wonders if they will kill him or not. Hayato trains with Piscolat, who comments that he is fast, but his punches are light. As she grabs him with his hair, she states it's his loss, as he no longer can attack or escape. He then faces Neput, but his attacks again have no impact. As he jumps at him, Neput knocks him out, stating that even if he is fast, coming in a straight line is easy to counter. Hayato is annoyed at how easily he is defeated, and Prontia offers to train him which he agrees. Hayato then wishes to fight all three demons at once, but Pronti states he will be his opponent, however, he won't be dodging his attacks and Hayato's goal would be to damage him. Hayato kicks Pronti, who doesn't even move. Pronti then kicks him back, sending him flying and crashing at the rocks. Seeing that, Piscolat can't believe they intended to fight monsters like that. Cory tells her they need to report soon and wonders what to do. Piscolat states they have two options, keep quiet or give fake reports to buy time. Piscolat decides to keep quiet as Meku will see through them. Beasley invites Paula to come with him to Cerebale since the two of them can convince them easier, and Paul agrees. As Hayato is sent flying again, Isley decides to tell him another way he can increase his power without increasing his weight. Brandy secretly calls her three children, Koreshi, Reiki, and Buzz. She tells them to escape the country and take a demon with them. The religious state of Cerebo is a land where all of its citizens are adherents of the same faith, resulting in a nation united by belief. Isley and Paula visit Cerebo, and introduce themselves as gods. However, the third holy pontiff of Cerebo, Sadashi Sakushu, doesn't believe them. The citizens then open fire, and Isli tells Paula to proceed with the plan. Paula then jumps down to them, spreading angel wings. Sadashi sees through their trick and the fake wings and takes out his gun and shoots at Paula, however, Paula catches the bullet. Seeing that, Sagashi and his men fall on their knees, acknowledging that Paula is indeed a god. On the meeting with the leaders of the country, Dibben Kordake doesn't believe they are gods and wonders if they can prove it. 
Isley states he can't really prove it, but can demonstrate power and speed that is beyond a human. Since they are the same beings as their divine pronti, they can be considered gods. Paula wonders what is the connection between the country and pronti, which surprises the men that she is a god and doesn't know it. Isley explains she haven't been around that long and asks Sagashi to explain. Sagashi explains the land of Saragol is said to predate a supposed collapse of human civilization, and their history states it was founded by God. Sagashi wonders what they can help the gods and Isley states that the gods, including Pronti, will be destroying the Zobel Empire, which will lead Cerebol and Hotina as the world's remaining superpowers. To prevent a global chaos, the gods are prohibiting war between the countries. Cerebel and Hotina then will offer support and help rebuild Zobel. Isley comment that Cerebel have been doing whatever they want in the name of the gods and turn religion into business. However, the gods don't mind it, but do not wish for more to die. Sagashi decided to do what the gods ask, but keep doing what they have been doing, spreading religion and earning wealth from it. Miku comes to the conclusion that the gods and their clothes are one thing and cutting something from them will vanish in time, making it impossible to take a sample. She gives Isley blood as an example and how it vanishes from Gudokun and Isley glasses fixing themselves. Thus their bodies are less matter and more kind of existence. Ubami is impressed of what Miku was able to learn from such a short video of a Dayton's fighting Gudo. At the Zobel Maternity Hospital, Yumeo helps out the slave woman give birth. Miku then comes and wishes to speak with Yumeo. Hayato and Pronti keep training. Hayato manages to push Pronti from the spot, surprising him how much he improved overnight. Pronti stops Hayato and wonders what Aisley told him as he started hitting harder. Hayato explains he told him to lower his weight while moving and increase it while hitting. Pronti is surprised that Hayato haven't realized it. As Esli and Paula returns and says the negotiations were a success, Pronti stops the training and states they will be invading Zobel Empire today. Ubami tells Brandy that Meku ran away, guessing that it's her best chance to escape while the rest are being killed. At the same time, the Idatans make their move and start cutting all roads leaving Zobel, isolating the demons. Brandy explains she also told her children to escape and that if the Idatans realize most demons are in Zobel, they will focus there, which will allow her children in Maiku's group time to escape. Ubemi wonders how will they distinguish humans from demons, but in that moment, Rin starts attacking everyone. Piscalat then uses the nation's radio system and announces a coup and tells the civilians who wish to survive to head for the northern coast. Hayato and Rin split and Rin ends up killing some men. However, the men stand up and go after her again. She ends up cutting their heads, however, they again stood up and continued to fight. She then sees herself surrounded by strings. From distance, Brandy is using her ultra-thin hair to control the men and fight Rin. Meanwhile, Hayato takes out some soldiers and ends up in a building where Gil and other slaves are kept. As he wonders why haven't they escaped and they ask for help, he realizes they can't escape cells. He then breaks the cell bars, but tells them it's probably safer to remain there for a while. Gil wonders who Hayato is and Takashita appears stating he is God but not the all-powerful creator that she worships. Hayato and Takashita start fighting, with Takashita taking the upper hand and commenting that Hayato is stronger than he expected and may give him a good workout. Rin is fighting Brandy's puppets, but as she gets annoyed, she just obliterates everything on her path, guessing they won't be coming back. Brandy is shocked by her power and Nu didn't stand a chance, but continues to fight and calls new puppets. Seeing the strings, Rin realizes they are puppets and someone is controlling them. Brandy then uses another puppet to act as the puppeteer and tricks Rin into attacking it and manages to cut Rin's hand. Brandy is surprised she fell for such trick that easily and wonders if she can actually win if she plays it smart. Rin sees habits and memories only her grandfather could have and drops her sword wondering if Obami is her grandfather. Brandy had figured there a way to defeat her and seeing Rin dropping her guard, she decides to act. She grabs her sword having realized that Rin's defense is terrible and she can't withstand the impact of her own attacks. She then slashes Rin in two, creating a blow so strong that it also blows Ubami away. Brandy decides to attack one more time to finish her off, but Rin grabs her neck and breaks it. Rin then cries wondering if she will ever be again with her grandfather. Six hours later, Piscalat and Cory join the assault. Hayato returns to battle and brainwashed Barcode, takes over the operation from Piscalat. With his help, they find and eliminate the last demons, ending the war. Paul and Gil look at Rin and wonder if she is okay. 
Her body had already regenerated, but she doesn't seem like normal. It's been a week since the Zobel Empire had been overthrown by a military coup d'etat organized by Piscalat and Neput. The Emperor Takeshita and Empress Brandy have been killed. Piscalat informs Isli that Gil had awakened, but he tells her to leave her in custody for now and allows Piscalat to rest. Piscalat goes to Gil and lies on her bed. She tells her that Zobel is gone and there won't be any more invasions. Gil wishes to help, but Piscalat questions her if she can drive heavy machines clear rubble all day, or have medical knowledge to treat injured people, but as she can't do any of that, she is just an useless person who can only pray. Jill can't argue with that, and that's why she wanted power so she can help. Meanwhile, the Idaten Gil also wishes for the same thing. Paula tells her that Idaten gets stronger by painful training, but Gil doesn't mind. When drawing out an Idaten involves adding your own thoughts to a nascent existence in order to shorten the amount of time required for manifestation. Because of that, Gil is influenced by both Hayato and Gil desire to get stronger. Hayato wishes to train with Rin, but Rin has no desire. Isli figured out that after she realized the demon lord's identity, she lost desire to live. Isli asks Prontia if he found any information on the demon lord's research. Prontia explains that the files are in a strange file format and can only be seen if you connect your consciousnesses to the computer. However, he isn't smart enough to analyze them and have been in and out trying to write them down on paper, bored you sleep, or someone else to analyze. Isli sees it's a three-pattern of genetic code, which he would have figured soon anyway. Pronti feels he lost his time and comments there are ten of thousand files like this, and they need to give up on the Demon Lord's research unless they can make a monitor that shows brain imagery or Isley train until he can access them himself. Isli comments Pronti can study to learn to understand them, but Pronti doesn't want to, as it feels waste of time. Isley informs him they identify the nine missing demons, and once they locate them, he will send him to eliminate them. But in the meantime, he needs to help train the Idatans to be able to defeat demons like Brandy and Nickel. Maiku had found the perfect prey. They go to a woman's house, Bonnie, and as she opens, they get themselves in. As they capture her, Maiku explains that she is perfect because has no friends or family, shops only online and has money from her family in her bank account, so they could spend years living there. As she found all her passwords and accounts, Miku tells Merku to kill Bonnie as they won't even need to question her anything. Merku then starts operating on Bonnie, taking her hand and face skin and wearing it, in order to be able to pretend it's her when she receives deliveries. Miku then tells Umeo to eat the remaining of the body. Umeo isn't happy as humans doesn't taste good, but eats the body. Ferlandia asks Kureishi what are they going to do now, but Kureishi has no idea on how to contact the demon lord. It explains that since they got Piscalat and Neput on their side, they know all of the emergency methods to contact him. Kureishi used a human and told him to call the demon lord and repeat what he wrote him. And Ubami tells him that they are being listened to and gives him the name to the nine demons that survived. A second later, two police officers come and arrest the man. Meanwhile, Maiku states he can contact the demon lord in few days, but it's better to stay quiet for a few years. A few years later on a deserted island, Meliana loses her arm to a monster. Muzz attacks it, but Meliana stops him, trying to explain it's not a monster, but their child. However, the child gets scared of Buzz and leaves. Buzz comments that without the demon lord, they are nothing more than monsters. Two years have passed, but Beasley and his team haven't heard or had any lead of the fugitive demons. He asks Piscalat what do the demons look if not fused with a human, and she explains they look like a giant creature with no rigidly defined form whose body is made out of tentacles. Isley wonders why Cory had so many eyes and Piscalat states, they all have multiple eyes, but most of them look inward after fusing and showcase she have an eye in her mouth. Barcode enters and sees Isley inspecting Piscalat's mouth and wonders if he is interrupting something, but they decline. Barcode then informs them that Buzz and Meliano showed up. Seven years pass and Rin is still not herself. While spacing out, she sees a whale that gets eaten by a demon. She comments she haven't seen a whale in years, but it was eaten, and then realizes it must have been a demon and quickly jumps in the water to look for it. Meanwhile, Gil and Hayato train with Cory, and they manage to beat him. Paula is surprised that Gil is managing to keep up with Hayato. Pronti had killed a fourth demon, and tells Aisley is safe to assume the pure-blooded demons are mating. Aisley believes the demons are growing fast because of the large amount of food available, while in the past, the demons had to cannibalize each other to survive. 
Isley puts wanted posters in a high reward for any information about Maiku and the rest of the fugitive demons. After shopping, Teta returns to Maiku's apartment. She asks him if he wants to eat first or play and he chooses play. Maiku later goes out and everyone recognizes her. One man tries to capture her, but she shoots him in the head. Piscalat confirms that is indeed Maiku, making them wonder what she is planning. Pronti follows Maiku into a building, but is unable to find her. Gisli then wonders how she escaped. Ferlandia recalls Maiku telling her that if the enemy wonders how they escaped, it's the demon's win. Rin is unable to find the demon in the ocean, but hears commotion caused by Paula and Cory's training. She then immediately attacks Cory, but Paula protects him with her body, telling her Cory is a friend. Seeing a demon in the ocean and a demon who is an ally, Rin wonders what is going on. As Hayato comes, she asks him, and he briefly explains the situation. However, he doesn't know why Ubami had memories of Rin's grandfather. Hearing that, Bisley tells Piscalat to shut down all surveillance equipment on the island, to prevent Miku figuring out the connection between the Idaden and Ubami. Maiku figures out that Isli is the only smart one and states they need to kill him. Isli tells Piscalat to get some rest. As she leaves the room, she comments that even though she worked with Isli, he never tried anything funny with her, but she kind of starts to wish he'd do. Realizing what she says, she gets embarrassed. Taking a shower, it gets steamy, and she realizes it's the same drug that Isli used. Piscalat then sees a regular soldier, but he reveals it's a mechanical body controlled by Ubami. Piscalat returns to Isli and asks where Prontia is. Hearing he is far away, she uses her hair and cuts Isli's left arm and legs. Isli realizes his brainwashing is undone. Seeing Obami in a soldier body, Isli realizes that the Meku they chased was actually Obami, and he switched faces and clothes in the building. Obami confirms, stating that if they figured this out earlier, their plan would have failed, especially after Prontia peeked in the changing room. Isley realizes that a person reacted to Pronti, but he didn't notice it, as that would have revealed the person isn't normal human. Cory is called back in Zobel, and is told to take Paula with him. Getting into Zobel, Cory's food is mixed with drugs and he is knocked out. Rin notices Paula is missing and Gil calls Pronti. He tells her to ask Gisley, but hearing he doesn't answer, he realizes something is off and heads to Zobel. He is unable to find Aisley and wonders what is going on, in that moment, the office explodes. Pronti gets a call from Neput and decides to go to him in barcode. Having taken Isli and Paula hostages, Maiku suggests they keep quiet for now and study the Idatans. Kureshi, Ferlandia, and Piscala then take the Idatans and starts experimenting on them. Kori is taken to Paula and Isli, but seeing Paula in pain, he starts to feel something. Maiku gets information from Piscala that Ubami is an Idatan born in the other side of the seal. Gil receives news from Prontia that Isli and Paula are captured by the enemy. Rin then starts running around to look for them. 